Shulam and Baruch, let's learn some Pink Elephants together. The fifth parag, eighth Mishnah. I'll just start with a story. <laughs> Back when I was a youngster, so my, my father bought me a chemistry set. That's right, uh, my parents harbored a dream that their only son would one day become the most Jewishy of American dreams. A doctor, and hence their investment in what could only be called a miniature laboratory. So the thing had everything it needed to blow up a small city. This is before health and safety took over the world. So there must have been about 50 different bottles of stuff. I was a kid, all kinds of exotic bits and pieces to mix things with. And it, it had a big book of experiments you know, the chemical things you could do at home. And and there were pictures and diagrams and temperatures and safety notes. And, and it was just a cornucopia of wonderful things that kids could do at home. So obviously, being a Jewish kid, I disregarded all the small print and uh, all the directions and only followed what I considered were important things. So I was given a space in the basement for my new uh, lab. And soon I set up a suitable table with a chair. And my parents were trailing as I started to discover uh, new things in my, and I, they figured I'm gonna be a, a budding scientist. Now, in, in those days, these homebound chemistry sets were basically meant to inspire children such as myself to seek more scientific knowledge in school. Instead, I believe it made a number of us completely chemi chemi chemistry phobic. And this was because if we didn't follow the directions, we could uh, do some serious damage. So personally, I, I hold my hands up. I, I melted a few spoons in my day. I, I dyed my shirt purple, and uh, let me see what else. Oh yeah, I burnt the hole in the basement floor. However, the greatest fun I had with this kit was there was this thing I called it the smoke trip. All right, see that if you mix certain chemicals together and you warm them up a bit, they give off a huge cloud of smoke, right? And the stuff smells like rotten eggs. So, for a kid, this is like mana from Shemayim. I could make this huge smoky thing and stink up the neighborhood <laughs> both at the same time. Of course, what I was really, what was really happening, is due to the chemical interaction of these two chemicals that I was mixing. Right on their own, they'd be okay. But put them together and add a little bit of uh, fire and bang, right? So I admit that this little experiment was tried only once, after which the chemistry set seemed to disappear. <laughs> yeah. And I never saw it again for some reason. And there was never any more talk about the future Dr. Rubin. So what did this teach me? Was there was something more important, and I think it's more important uh, pertinent to my life and to all our lives. You see, for everything we do, has a reaction. When you take a particular decision, it interacts with other things in the environment, and as a result, things develop in a certain way. So our lives are like one huge chemistry set. When we mix things together, we can discover great potential, both for the good and unfortunately for the bad. There is no magic. This is just how the world works. Kamil Chodavish, they created a finely tuned world. And when we mix things about, we must do so with, 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 with his directions. Otherwise, things interact in the wrong way. And smoke and bad smells is only just the beginning. 
then let me just think back a few months ago, right? Things spiritually were pretty awful. Out in the world, in the society that we find ourselves in, right? People was put, chasing after riches. Murder and mayhem was about. There was. I once spoke to a to a very prominent clergyman, not of our religion, and he said to me, I, I, I said to him, you know, this has become a godless society. And he looked at me, you know, he said, I said, there was once a great rabbi, his name was the Baal Shem HaKodesh, Baal Shem. and he lived in Ukraine some couple of hundred years ago. And I said to him, you know that that rabbi would never go to a village that didn't have a church. So his followers asked, Rabbi, what do you care if there's a church in a village? We're, we're Jewish. We don't go to churches anyway. So the great rabbi said, you don't understand. A village without a church is a godless place. And a Jew should never find himself in a godless place. And I said this to, it had to have been the Bishop of Manchester. And he looked at me, I said, we're living in a godless society. The churches are being sold off to, for, for hotels and bars. What's going to happen? This goes back several years ago. What's going to happen? Huh. Things got out of hand. Things, people, I guess, was total consumerism involved. Everything was about, um, and, and nothing was spoken of, of, of in a spiritual sense. In fact, Religious people are became very quickly a very small minority, a, a kind of a cute cult of people who still believe in something. While they're all out there having a great time, they try to change our education system, everything to turn us away from this that we know is 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 holy and pure. So, what happens within the weeks, months? We've been handed a, a closed up, a locked up world. Because Hashem's, it, it just did, it couldn't continue, it couldn't continue this way. No wonder that Hashem caused all this to stop in its tracks. We're sitting here two months into isolation. So much has been lost. So many tears have been shed. What will happen when Hashem allows us back to the world and restart it? Will it be business as before? Will they just blow the whistle and everyone will jump back into the swimming pool? We, B'nai Yisrael, we must take notice. We have to understand. Because whatever mitzvahs we are doing is creating any, all the positive energy that is possible. So because when we are mixers of the world's chemistry, if you will, we are expected to do the right thing. Our mistakes are much more serious because we are the bearers of Kav Yuchel de Eibish's Torah. We aren't allowed to act as amateurs. For us, the world and its balance is a prime concern. So the Mishnah that I'm learning with us, and what we're going to learn now, speaks of this, of what can happen when we neglect the, the holy balance that Hashem created in this world. Notice that much of the material havoc is caused by spiritual neglect. In the total world, there is no real difference. Everything is interwoven. Says the Mishnah, seven kinds of punishment come upon the world for seven kinds of transgression. If some tithe and some do not, famine of confusion ensues. Some go hungry and others have plenty. Said so the Kajna to Magid, he points out that the Zaya tells us that tithing alludes to Yerushamayim, having fear of Hashem. 
Therefore, the Mishnah refers to one who sometimes fears Hashem and other times does not. Such a lifestyle causes a breakdown in the flow of spiritual energy that feeds the world. You may seek to do tshuva, and that will help in regards to your own situation, your own standing. However, the harm done to the spiritual balance in the atmosphere is now out of kilter. So the question continues, he tells us here that those given to lapses of their year Shemaim, of their fear of Hashem, can cause a confusion in the world order through their hit and miss relationship with Kavi Yuchel the Irish's Rotson. Says the Mishnah, the, the sword comes upon the world for the delay of justice, for the perversion of justice. And because of those that teach the Torah not in according to the halacha. When mankind treats the Torah, the plan that there is the Torah for this world in a lackadaisical disdain, in a creating a godlessness in the world as we know it is, then the entire edifice upon which we stand becomes in in fever. The, 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 the shaking in it. It's not, it's not wholesome. When war comes upon mankind, it causes, its causes are very seldom clear. There will be talk of differing national agendas and needs for freedom. It's all being packaged, merchandised. However, much of the world that we have experienced can be traced to the fact that the vast majority of those involved feel a sense of resentment which festers when a society sees itself being led by a system that has no regard to justice. Uh, this lockdown, do you look at what the political, geographical situation uh, is, has been in the last several years? It's been building up and building up madness of things. It just doesn't make sense. And human beings go through life and they, there's a sense of unease, of unfairness, of a lack of, just, of justice. And, and, and people are driving in different directions. In a world without truth, the truth of Torah, there is a gnawing at the heart that serves as a constant irritant. And this can be compounded if there are those who teach Torah diluted with, with the immorality that goes on around them. I leave to your understanding what this is. What, what's happening in certain circles today. With my little chemistry set, I didn't have to worry too much because at worst, my father would come and save me. When we played with the different aspects in our lives, we do so at our own peril and with those around us. Need a love. We are all wondering how long this situation is going to last. I hope and pray that as we sit in this isolation, we think and ponder how we're going to readjust our own situation vis-a-vis Kaviyuch of the Irish. We can only survive and hope to create a positive future when we create and connect ourselves with our greatest father, Hashem Yisbarach. The Irish is a health but 
so sagen wir Kurve, wie soll ich sagen, Treffen, nur gesinnte Heim. 